Yo, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, we're gonna talk about the current state of the Ethereum merge and why all signs point to probably summer. In this video, I'm gonna take you through all the recent news from the developer calls to stuff Vitalik himself has said, and we'll do some calculations and some speculation to figure out when exactly the merge might happen if everything was to go to plan. So let's take a look here. So there was the Ethereum Shanghai Developer Summit that just happened a day ago as of making this video and Vitalik himself made an appearance. You can see right here on your screen, it says the merge will probably happen in the summer. And he talked a lot about Ethereum's current state and it's all of its future plans. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below, but he says August, straight up August is when it's likely to happen if everything went to plan, but September and October is definitely realistic as well. The merge is happening, it's coming, that's the current timeline. So let's talk about everything that's happened to get us to this point in the last week or two. So the first thing that happened was the Ethereum core development call. This happened uh, last Friday, a week ago as I'm making this video. And a couple really important things happened here. Number one, all the shadow forks have been successful. So a shadow fork is a copy of the main network uh, and then they run the merge through there. And if you rewind a little bit, what they did first is they ran a development network spun up is called Kiln just to test the merge. So that was number one, right? That happened, that's done. I made a video on that. Uh, and then from there, there's now been five shadow forks of the main network that they've tested the merge through and, and all of that uh, for all of our purposes has been successful as well. So in this call, they talked about, well, what do we do next? What's gonna happen now? And that's when they decided to now move to the public test networks and start testing the merge there. And there's three public test networks that have existed for Ethereum, and they're gonna move to one of them. So in case you're not familiar, the three are Robson, Gorley and Sepolia. And so Robson is the one that they decided to move to on this last core developer call. So the way this is all going to work and the way the merge works is they pick what's called a total terminal difficulty. And I'm gonna walk you through that in a second here, but we're probably familiar, if you've been around a little bit or been through some forks before, what you're probably familiar with is that they'll pick a block height number, right? blocks continue to get produced and they'll pick a number in the future. They can do some like uh, predicaments of when that might happen and they'll pick a number and say, this is when the fork or the merge or whatever will happen at this block height number. Actually, let me give you an example as I talk through this. So we're gonna go to the Robston Test Net Explorer over on Etherscan. So this is the public test network that I'm talking about here. And you can see the block numbers, right? These are the latest blocks being produced on the network, just like on the main Ethereum chain. Um, and they have numbers here and you can pick a number and say at this number is when the fork will happen and code that all in. Instead, what they've decided to do is pick a total terminal difficulty number for when the merge will happen. Um, and so if I click on a block number, I'll show you what that total terminal, terminal difficulty is. So if you come down here, you can see the difficulty, right? This is the difficulty of the network as it stands right now for miners. The amount of effort required to mine a new block, this algorithm may adjust according to time. So depending on the amount of hash power on the network, all that kind of stuff, block times, um, this difficulty number will change. But total difficulty is the total difficulty of the chain until this block. So this is all these difficulty numbers added up over time, gives you this total difficulty number. And this is the number that they choose when they talk about total terminal difficulty. So going back to that Ethereum core developer call, they picked a number um, to have the merge happen in the on the Robson test network. And so they picked a number based on some calculations that would land them about June 8th, which is around four weeks from uh, the developer call. So around June 8th, they picked a difficulty number and that's when the Robson merge would happen. Problem happened is that, and they covered this on the call that just happened uh, a couple days ago, this is the consensus layer call, is that they picked um, the wrong number. So if you go down here, Tim Biko himself said that they picked this number right here, which is, uh, I think that's 43 quadrillion, I might have that wrong, 
uh, to land the fork around June 8th. The merch happened around June 8th on the Robson Network, but sounds like they picked the wrong number because that would actually push them to later June, to late June, uh, instead of that June 8th time frame. So then they had to figure out what to do. And this is what they talked about on that consensus layer call uh, the other day. And I guess what's poetic in this whole thing is they had a few options that could just change this number. Um, but for whatever reason, probably beyond my understanding, they chose a different option and they chose to up the difficulty on the network via mining in order to hit that date. Uh, they're talking about renting hash power from nice hash or whatever they could do to get miners on the network about one gig of hash i think is what they wanted to do to then raise the difficulty of the network so it would encourage uh that total terminal difficulty number to be hit around june 8th and I, it's just so so poetic that they made a mistake which is i wish they didn't make that mistake right confidence level in this big big undertaking making a, a simple mistake like that but then to fix the mistake they got to leverage mining, uh, which is what will be going away when they go to proof of stake. So anyway, I thought that was comical in my in my opinion. So anyway, what you're going to look for is this total difficulty number um, on the Robston network. Once it hits that, the merge will happen. And that's how this will follow on every other public text network that follows. And then eventually on the Ethereum mainnet, they'll pick a total difficulty number and when that number is hit is when the merge will happen. So that's where we're at right now. Let's do a little bit of speculation because the question then becomes, so Robson say that's really, really successful, right? That's gonna happen on June 8th. And then if that's June 8th on June 10th is the next Ethereum developer call where they can take a look at how it went and plan for what they wanna do next. That's the question is like, does the next public test network happen two weeks after that, four weeks after that? You know, what is the time frame between public test networks? Um, and this is where we got to do a little bit of speculation considering what Vitalik has said about August, what they've done previously when they tested EIP 1559 or what they might want to do depending how good Robson goes. And the other thing I'll add, and they talked about this on the developer call is that like the version of the merge that is currently going through the Robson test network is not like the final version that will also go through mainnet. It's kind of like a, well, Robson test network's gonna go away at some point. It's not gonna be around forever. So let's take what we got, see if it works, and then we'll refine it as we go through the next public test networks. But that leads me to that, like how long in between, you know, until we get to uh, Gorley and Sepolia and then eventually mainnet. So I pull up, let me pull up calendar here. And what I did is just like best case scenario, I think, is that they hit the ROPS and merge, have their dev call on the 10th of June. And then maybe they say, all right, we're looking good. Let's go through Sepolia, you know, two weeks from when ROPS and went through theirs. And then let's have a dev call right after that. And then let's maybe that went great. Let's go to Gorley two weeks after the let Sepolia merge. And then we're putting ourselves into July at that point. And so... Maybe we fly through all of those merges and everything goes great. It's two weeks in between each one. And then they could take like a second to pause and like get ready for the mainnet merge. Or maybe go through Robson. You know, maybe it's four weeks until the next one. Um, and then four weeks until the next one after that. And that still gets us around like the August, late August, early September timeframe. I think a lot just depends on how each public test network goes. And what I'm really looking for is how it goes on Robson. And that might help dictate where we go in the future. And if we look at the agenda for the next developer call um, that is coming up here, you can see that they already have, and that's gonna be on May 27th. So week of making this video, they already have uh, some merge updates there. They have Gorley in there, which is the next public test network. Um, so I think we'll get an idea of where how fast they're gonna to wanna to move to that a week from today. And then we'll also talk about difficulty bomb tracking, right? Because the difficulty bomb is still going off. I have a video on this. I'll link, leave it linked up in the card above. The difficulty bomb is like really happening. It's happening right now. And I've been tracking that. And you can see, if we look over on this website, uh, these are all the previous difficulty bombs that have gone off. 
and you can see the one that they pushed back that was going off in December, right? And they forked to delay it and it's gone off again. Uh, and we're coming down, I think we're actually lower blocks per week than we were in December. And so what's gonna happen is we're just gonna be feeling the effects of that. And you can see over on Y charts too, like this is that same December one. This is uh, average block times got up to, I wanna say 13.68 seconds. Uh, and we've, we've eclipsed that. We're now at 13.89 seconds and those are gonna keep going up. And what that really means for you and me as miners is that means uh, less Ethereum, less blocks means less Ethereum, means less reward, less profit for us. So that's like another thing they have to take a look at is depending how long uh, this merge is tested, you know, is like we might have to delay the difficulty bomb so that the end users aren't super impacted on the Ethereum network. So everything's like really, I mean, everything's moving along. It's nice to see all this progress, but it also feels like a lot is coming and it's coming fast. Uh, and there's going to be some decisions that have to be made really soon. And the other thing to take into account is that like the difficulty bomb is there to kind of like start swaying miners off. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but the problem is if it goes off too fast, uh, then there can be a bad impact uh, to the end users who are using Ethereum for you know all the reasons that Ethereum exists. So I think that's pretty much everything up until now. Um, I'm thinking late August, if everything goes absolutely according to plan, that's what I was thinking before. It's nice to see Vitalik come out and confirm that. Um, and then depending how the public test networks go and if they want to take breaks in between that or mainnet, I think that's when we can go into the September, October timeframe. And I want to shout out Bitsby Trippin here too, because it's a really good point is that if we get beyond that, then we're into like the holiday, November, December. And I don't think anybody wants to release anything major during holiday season in case something were to go wrong. So personally, personal opinion, personal speculation if we don't hit, if Ethereum devs don't hit the September, maybe early, early October timeframe for this, I think we're going to Q1 uh, 2023 for sure. But I'll keep paying attention to this, making some videos, getting them out to you guys. We'd love to know all your thoughts down in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU mining content. Join my Discord if you want to chat. The link's down in the description. Follow me on social media. Those links are also down in the description. And as always, please take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you in the next video.